Today, um, before reading the dialogue, I want to share some something about our background. So when you visit dental clinic, definitely the dentist or so dental um, nursing, they ask, so why did you come here? And then you say blah blah blah, I have toothache or pain or something wrong in my tooth or gum. And then oh, we have not much, we don't have not much of choice to look at the detail of the patient. So as I said, always patient lied. So based on his or her comment, we try to look at what's going on really. But uh, in other part, we cannot believe 100% about his or her comment. So this is some two strategy how we look at the patient mouth. So first one is that inter or exam. Exactly uh, using your eye, you can look at detail about intra order. Order means your mouth, intra means inner side. Just try to look at the inner side of the, the patient mouth, that's all. And then uh, you cannot assess all of the part because some part you cannot see by your eye, even though you are using dental meter. So in that case, you can use camera and then for better purpose, for example, you said to, you told the patient you have 10 tooth decay, but sometimes patient didn't believe it. So in that case, you take the camera and then take the picture and then show them this is, a, this is the dental carriers and then when I count it, it's 10. So you have to treat everything. Okay, so let's, I want to show how is the internal exam and how we operate the camera in dental clinic. So in this YouTube, you can see, so we can use our fingers and our eye, and then we can, this is some dental meter. So dental meter, and then maybe they have some light here. So using the dental light and dental meter, you can look at what's wrong. And then when you touch some anatomical structure using your finger, you can feel and you can feel something and then from this sensation you can know something and then in this dialogue they mention us many anatomical terms like lingua or um, palate other things so this kind of anatomical term will be will that kind of thing you will learn soon maybe this semester or next semester so please don't worry about that anyhow the basic information about this video club is that Using your finger, or your visualization, or your instrument, you can see and feel what's going on in the order mouth of the patient. And then the other thing is that, as I said before, we can use camera. So let's see how the how camera can operate. I'm 
As you see, yeah, this intraoral camera is very important to uh, persuade the patient. You should treat this tooth because they are cracked, they are broken, or you have dental tooth decay on this tooth, so you have to treat it. So, as you know, believing is everything from the point of the patient. So, you have to show them this, is re this should be really treated. And then the, the reason why they mention internal camera and then you feel like, oh, maybe they have another thing, which means extra oral camera. So actually, extra oral camera also they can be used. For example, our smartphone or other just camera that can be called as extra oral camera. We didn't put this smartphone in your mouth. Okay, so internal oral camera is that uh, the manufacturer, they make the camera as much as small as possible and then we can approach intraorally okay and then this is some another YouTube video so actually when we feel and imagine about intraoral exam which means that in the inside of tooth and gum and tongue but also from the dentist you can diagnosis take diagnosis and then you can treat the extra oral anatomy. For example, your mouth lips, and then your temporal mandible joint, your jaw joint, and then uh, when you, when we imagine the dental dental field, some people are very focused on the oral anatomy, including tooth and gum. But as a dentist, you should look at the another point of view, other things like your lip or your jaw or other part of your face including the nose so dental field really we can cover the most part of the face except the eye and then the most common disease related to the extra oral anatomy is temporal mandibular joint this one temporal mandibular joint so you sometimes you feel that uh, I heard some click sound from the, this jaw, or I cannot open the mouth properly. This is all called temporal mandibular disorder. Yeah, so abbreviation of TMD, so which can cause some pain in your jaw joint and then in the muscle or in the, your limitation of movement. So this is video how the people diagnose the TMD. So actually in USA, um, uh, their dental payment is very huge, So, which means that every single patient, before this every single patient, the dentist or dental assistant, they should do like that. Because the patient pay a lot of money from their private insurance or their public insurance. But in Korea, uh, the Korea, Korea insurance system, they didn't cover this kind of uh, disinfection process. So we, we, we should do like that, but we cannot do.
Yeah, as you can see, this is not massage. Yeah, some people say that this, this act like a massage. Yeah, actually, some in some part is true. If you feel if you push some more pressure, it turns to be a massage. But the real purpose of this kind of extra ray exam is to detect which muscle or which part is something wrong. So you should focus on as a dentist. Not only the intraoral mouth, but also other parts of your face, including or surrounding area, should be investigated by the dentist. This is a dental light. Yeah. So they start to investigate the intra -order. So then now I stop this video clip, but you can see whatever you want because I'm gonna. Uh, Upload this YouTube yeah, as a comment. So yeah, from the beginning, beginning they start to investigate extraoral anatomy, and then they jump up to the internal anatomy. Yeah, this is some basic step how the dentist treat the patient. Okay, and then so also as uh, many treatment cases in dental clinic uh, in this dialogue they focus on the perio exam perio means gum gum means your I can say the, the, another part soft tissue in oral okay so how we investigate the perio exam and then what is the concept what is the examination process and what is surgery I'm gonna share this three part So this is called periodontal proof. Proof means that some you want to detect some depths of something. So in that case, we should use this periodontal proof. And then when you look at this color, black and little gray, uh, black and silver, and silver and black, uh, depending on the, this color, we can approximate how deeply this proof can go deeper. So you feel like, oh, itching, right? It's very something very painful for the patient, especially when this gum is healthy because they cannot go inside deeply. But when the patient has some gum disease, this proof can go deeper, deeper uh, among this. Yes, three millimeter approximately this one band and then there is no bleeding when you push this probe into dental gum tissue.
So this is called periodontal pocket. This is called periodontal pocket. Pocket is you have pocket in your pants, right? So compared to the previous healthy gum, this dental proof they can go further and further. And then maybe when we push this proof, it will cause some bleeding as well. So you have two parameters. One is how deeply this proof can go inside of the pocket. Second one is that when you proving, when you are proving, there is bleeding or not. So from the two symptoms, you can decide you guys have some periodontal disease or not. This is a basic concept how the dentist can take diagnosis about the gum disease. And of course, uh, when you look at this gum tissue, and you can, uh, with the uh, many experience, you can see whether this gum tissue has a periodontal disease or not by your eyes, because sometimes they change the color. But it will take some time to know. So this is some proving technique. They should using a parent proof, and then actually this proof can approach all parts of the tooth. So from the, your left and right and down and up, you can prove. Prove means you can push the dental proof into dental po parent pocket as much as possible in many spots, many points. So it will take some time. So as a beginner, it will take 20 minutes, but as a professional, it will take three or five minutes. So as you, as you heard before, 3 mm three millimeter is just normal range, so which means there is no periodontal pocket that much to cause some gum disease. But when they disprove depth is over 3 millimeter, 3 millimeter, which means that they have some possibility to have gum disease. So when you look at this tooth, when you look at this tooth, this is some proximal part. Proximal means close part. And then this one is distal part. Distal means far away part. And then when she said line angle, line angle means that a certain line of this tooth. So she wants to prove this proving from the distal far away to close, to the proximal. And then in dialogue, she mentioned about the buckle. Buckle means that this part, your, how can I say, your facial part. And then the opposite meaning of the buckle means lingual. Lingual means your tongue part. So uh, from the point of the tooth, you have four direction. Outer side, and in your facial side, buckle, tongue side, lingual, and far away side, distal, and close side, proximal. So you have four different anatomical structure when you describe the direction of the tooth. So anyhow, she proving this one and one tooth, two tooth, three tooth, every tooth. So it will take many times. Also, you, uh, when my video is finished, you can learn all of the video together. So as your last video, this is some surgery thing. So actually, the, we have um, two options for treating periodontal disease. One is scaling as a preventive or some treatment purpose. The other one is that you can do the surgery. Literally, you remove your gum tissue and then from the periodontal pocket, you remove everything of the bacteria or other kind of inflammation tissue 
and then put it back into normal. And then it will decrease periodontal pain. Maybe this video can include includes many some bleeding or scary things, but you should be accustomed to this kind of surgery. You can see this uh, tooth is not good. So yeah, this is cutter. So after anesthesia, yeah, definitely you should do anesthesia. And then cutting this gum tissue. After cutting, okay, and then push back to the this gum tissue from the outer side. And then now you can many bad bacteria or debris. So using this sonicator or your cleaning machine, we can clean out this part. And you found this defect bone defect between the bone and then tooth and cause certain part as well and then now he's applying this bone graft material into the bone defect to fill and to make the bone tissue regeneration And finally, put some kind of gummy tissue. And then finally, suturing. Make it fix. So, yeah. So, as you can expect, the suturing is very important to maintain this surgery field. So, after the suture and surgery, uh, you should, patient should not um, drink alcohol or smoke during one minute maybe, and then during the time, it, it heals quickly. So compared to other, other defect in your part, the older tissue, they heal fast, the others. So within one week, this kind of uh, sub-tissue will connect together and then maybe from the bone tissue it will take two or three months to fill this defect. So anyhow, this is um, a surgery thing about for treating the gum tissue. So and then I'm gonna share this uh, dental carious things. So when you look at the especially pediatric dentistry, your some student, elementary student, or before elementary student, you, you can look at this kind of white spot and a cavity even on the upper tooth and down tooth, front tooth. So this is some cavity. Cavity means some defect. And then white spot. White spot means initial stage of the dental caries. Okay? So after making this white spot, and then it will turn to be cavity. Because the bacteria of the then bacteria to induce dental dental carriers, they can make the white spot first, and then further and further over time, they can degrade this your enamel using their exit, and then finally they can make this cavity, and then this is gingival inflammation compared to upper part, this lower part a little bit reddish. And then they will show some kind of uh, some swelling as well. So you can easily determine this is a cavity, white spot, and gingival inflammation. So with upper part is called dental caries, below part called is gum gum disease. So let's look at So for inhibiting this kind of carriers of the ba baby or pediatric patient, we can use the strong 
strategy to treat this kind of or treat or prevent this kind of dental caries is to fluoride, to use the fluoride. So I'm going to share this fluoride apply video. So you can see this kind of white spot. Okay. After bleaching. So cleaning first. And this is etching. Etching means uh, make the tooth clean. And then washing. And then now we apply our fluoride material on the tooth. After 30 seconds, etching them one more time. Apply one more time. One more time etching. Apply. This is better than before. So using this uh, fluorosis and then some resin infiltration, you can make no white spot and then perfect, perfect aesthetic appearance. So from this kind of system, you can treat the dental caries of the front tooth. So yeah, before this is our background of of this dialogue. So when you look at this video clip and then my class, you can easily understand what's going on on our dialogue. So for having the dialogue, I'm going to introduce one person. Yeah. Her name is Jessie, born in the Republic of South Africa, Cape Town. And then yeah, she's from University College of London, as you know, uh, QS ranking number five. Yeah, so world world class world college ranking is number five, and then Isman Dental Institute. Also, she is a graduate school of that UCL Isman Dental Institute, and then he joined ITREN as an exchange program. Okay, please welcome her. Hi, Jessie. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. So yeah, nice to see you. Yeah. So. And I'm very glad to to accept my invitation. Yeah, I know you are a very busy person, but for this class, you are volunteer to take this dialogue. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, please approach. So, and then yeah, let's yeah, me and Jesse will have some dialogue. So about the dialogue number two. So I'm gonna be a dentist, and you are gonna be a patient. Okay. So, good morning. Yeah, I exchanged Cassie, Catherine to Jesse. Good morning, Jesse. What can I do for you today? Okay, let me take a look. Open your mouth, Jesse. I'm going to take the picture of your teeth with the oral camera. Please keep your mouth open. Mm -hmm. And then you can close your mouth. Rinse, please. Let me show you the picture. Mm. Look at this. There are the chewing surface of your bottom molars. They are decayed. Decayed means you have some dental cavity there, but not deep. Very shallow. Yes, you need filling. Unfortunately, you need a separate appointment for fixing the cavity because I have a full schedule today. 
Mm -hmm. So from this dialogue, maybe you will look at this aura camera we already learned, white aura camera, and decay means that uh, tooth decay. Tooth decay is something, some defect of your tooth from the bacteria. And then chewing surface, chewing surface means that you are biting surface. The surface of when you bite. Yeah. Okay, next go to the dialogue number two. So yeah, you can be a dental hygienist, I can be a patient. Yeah, let's start. Sure, but you mentioned about the oral cancer. How did I take it? This spot on your upper lip and an ulcer on your lower lip. Unusual. Well, I've had a tingling sensation on my lips since yesterday, and my lower lip has been sore. Uh, actually, I haven't slept well recently because lots of things are going on in my life. Yeah, you know, there's corona outbreak or any, everything's messed up, so I feel a bit tired recently. Aptas ulcer. Labialis. Better soon. Okay, thank you. So, um, when you look at this dialogue, there are many things which is abnormal to you. So, order cancer, you can imagine the cancer in the order system. And then after TMJ, you already know, temporal mother joint, your jaw, jaw joint. And then a tingling sensation means some kind of um, some burning sensation of your lips with the pain. So when you, you have some ulcer, some kind of defect on your lower or upper lip, which is called uh, academically aftas ulcer. So oh, something, some defect in my lower lip which is mostly 90% aftas ulcer, okay? Aftas ulcer is from the many regions, including depressed immune system or mal ingredient. And then herpes labialis is most of the time is from the virus infection, okay? So aftas ulcer and herpes labialis is most common disease on your lips. Yeah. So from the interval oral exam, you can easily detect some oral cancer, and the aftas ulcer and herpes labialis. Okay, and third one is about the gum tissue disease. Okay, let me check your gums. There are spaces between your teeth and gums. Normally, up to three millimeter deep is considered healthy. Poking more than four millimeter deep mean you have gum disease or periodontal disease. After probing, most of the pockets on your molar are 4 and 5 mm deep, which means there are lots of calcium deposit, also as tartar. Calcium deposit is not good for your tooth. So they cast biofilm easily, and the biofilm is the main cause of the gum inflammation. This is why your gums are sore and bleed when you brush your teeth. Never, never, never. That means that your gums are unhealthy and inflamed. So you should not bleed when you brush your teeth. Absolutely. No, in this case, your gums are slightly receded and the loose surface of your exposed, and it causes root sensitivity. Mm, unfortunately, once the gums have receded, they don't grow back. 
You may get a gum grafting to cover the exposed roots, but your case is not advanced enough to require surgery. Biofilms can aggravate the level of the gum recession. So it's very important to maintain good oral hygiene in order to have less tartar buildup and inflammation. Okay, so in this dialogue, they, we already know about the, the proving depth, 3 mm normal, and 4 mm over is gum disease. And then calcium deposit, this is some kind of bad things. So calcium deposit, it will make biofilm. Biofilm can make gum disease. So this is some uh, sequence of the gum disease. So you can understand these things. And then, yes, sometimes you've also observed your bleeding when you, touch, when you brush your teeth. You should definitely visit the dental clinic, okay? Because this is the starting point of your gum degeneration. And then sometimes, even though you don't have any dental cavities, you can feel some kind of sensitive to the cold water or hot water. In that case, most of the time, you lose your face under the gum, they're exposed to the gum tissue. So this receded means that the gum tissue, gum tissue level is go down to the bone. Especially they should go up and fully cover the bone and root. But sometimes because of the gum disease, they can go down and then your, your tooth root can be exposed. And then when you drink the cold water, this cold water can penetrate the tooth root surface and then you can feel the core sensitivity so it's very important to cover your gum to cover your root surface using your gum and then unfortunately once the gum has some defect go down they cannot go up so it's very important to maintain your gum level especially when you are when you are 20s or 30s okay yeah, this is my end of class today so thank you Jesse for your visiting and then please see you next time. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is the end of the class and then uh, also I want to I want you guys to record your video and audio together and then upload your video clip in YouTube and then please share your YouTube to the your representative person to collect your yeah, to collect your taking class. Okay, thank you very much. See you next week.